Hey everyone, Mark here from CNC Sourced. If you're scratching your head trying to figure out the right feeds and speeds for your CNC projects, this video is for you. I'm going to share the secret formula to calculate optimal feed rates and RPM for all your milling and machining needs. Be sure to watch until the end for an exclusive tip that will revolutionize your CNC machining efficiency. Whether you're working with metals, plastics, woods, or composites, getting your feeds and speeds dialed in correctly makes all the difference in precision, efficiency, tool life, and ultimately the quality of your finished parts. So what are feeds and speeds exactly? Simply put, feed rate refers to how fast the cutting tool moves through the material, while spindle speed or RPM indicates how fast the tool spins. Adjusting these two factors allows you to optimize the metal removal rate while avoiding issues like excessive tool wear, chatter, or poor surface finish. The key is to balance chip load, which is the thickness of the material cut by each tooth of the tool during one rotation. You want each tooth to cut an optimal chip thickness to maximize material removal without overloading or overheating the tool. Chip load depends on a couple of key parameters, the properties of the material being cut, tool diameter, number of flutes or teeth on the tool, desired surface finish, width and depth of cut, and so on. Complex stuff, but stick with me, I'll break it down step by step. First, let's talk units. Feed rate is measured in inches per minute, or IPM. RPM, as you probably know, stands for revolutions per minute. When selecting RPM and feed rates, you also need to consider surface speed and chip load. Surface speed measures how fast the outer edge of the cutting tool moves across the workpiece in feet per minute, or FPM. Chip load, on the other hand, is measured in inches per tooth per revolution. Quite a mouthful, I know. It indicates the rate at which material is removed by each cutting edge on the tool. Now for the formulas. First, you determine the optimal surface speed for your specific material and tool material from reference tables. Then use that surface speed to calculate the RPM. For imperial units, RPM equals 12 multiplied by surface speed in feet per minute divided by 3.14 multiplied by the tool diameter in inches. Next, choose the recommended chip load for your operation, material, and tool from another reference table. Finally, use chip load and RPM to calculate the feed rate in IPM. Simply multiply RPM by chip load by the number of flutes or teeth on the tool. Now, before you go plugging numbers into these formulas, keep in mind that the standard reference tables provide theoretical values. In practice, chip loads tend to deviate based on real conditions. For example, pocketing operations allow higher chip loads than profiling. Similarly, chip load decreases at depths much lower or higher than the tool diameter. So start with the equations to get a baseline feed rate and RPM, then tweak to suit your specific operation, workpiece material, tools used, and machine capabilities. You'll need to fine-tune over multiple test cuts using both sound and visual cues. Listen for chatter or excessive noise indicating overly aggressive cuts. Inspect chips and machine surfaces closely. Chips should be curled and continuous, not powdery. Surfaces should be smooth and uniform. If you see marks, taper, chatter, or poor finish, adjust feeds and speeds in small increments until optimal. I suggest changing only one variable at a time while keeping the other constant to accurately gauge the impact of your tweaks. For example, start conservative with a low to moderate feed rate and baseline RPM. Gradually increase feed in small steps while maintaining the same RPM speed until chatter arises, then slightly back off. Next, lower RPM in increments while holding feed steady to explore how surface finish improves at lower surface speeds. It takes some trial and error dialing in feeds and speeds for each unique job, but this approach helps quickly zero in on the sweet spot. While reference tables and formulas give you a starting point, Real-world factors limit maximums for feeds and speeds. Consider machine rigidity, spindle power, torque and speed range, controller settings, motors and drives. Exceeding these thresholds causes missed steps, excessive vibration, tool fractures, and other nasties even with optimal chip loads. It pays to understand your machine's limits. Additionally, record feeds, speeds, and other cut parameters that produce great results so you can refer back or reuse them for similar jobs. No need to reinvent the wheel every time. So in summary, while feed rates and spindle speeds may seem confusing at first, mastering them is simple with the right formulas and hands-on testing. Spend some time dialing them in perfectly for your machine, and you'll be cranking out precision parts faster than ever. Want to go deeper on optimizing feeds and speeds? Check out our complete guide over at cncsourced.com for charts, real-world examples, and tips. Just search for Mastering CNC Feeds and Speeds until next time. Happy making!